Hi guys, welcome back for another show. Today I'd like to share with you how I clean up a Gunpla and get it ready for paint. Today I'm going to show you what I did for my 1144 scale Astaroth by Bandai and we'll run through a few basic steps. Let's go. Oh yeah, I have a special gift for you guys. I put together a uh, PDF of the materials and paints that I used in this project. Hosted on my blog, there'll be a link below so you can click there and get a free download. Cheers. Today I'd like to run through with you some of the simple tools and the processes I use to uh, clean up a Gumpler before paint. So I've shown you I've got a, uh, a little HG Astaroth. Uh, I can't show you construction this time because my lovely wife put this one together for me. Uh, when I was preparing for GW, uh, GBWC 2017 down in Sydney, I made the Grimgird and my wife made this one for me. With my basic tools here, you can see I've got a selection of files, finishing papers, as they're called in Japan, sandpaper, uh, 400 and 600 grit. That's a ceramic knife I showed, as well as a, uh, a standard exacto standard type blade. And then a dust mask, because uh, when sanding back a lot of this plastic, it's uh, really important to protect our lungs. And a little bit of water. And I put that on the sandpaper, the finishing paper, to, uh, to stop the dust from kicking up. Now this little hack, it may or may not work for you. It's just like a little thing that I do. I like to cut these, uh, these finishing abrasives, the sandpaper, into little squares. And I find that uh, one square tends to last me for about one project. And I use it from when it's good and fresh. Uh, and then as, as it wears out during my process, it gets softer and a little bit, you know, uh, less abrasive on the, uh, on the plastic. And I use that as it wears out. Uh, for a small one like this, I'll probably go with 400 and 600. You can go down to smaller grit numbers. Uh, the higher the number, the less abrasive it is. Uh, yes, that's right. Uh, 180 is really, really powerful. It's basically like sand glued to paper. And then say 1,000 uh, up to 2,000 is very, very soft, uh, almost for polishing. Uh, I tend to go between 400 and 600. Looking the kid over, and my wife Tomoe has done an embarrassingly good job. It's not a surprise though. She's a craftsperson herself and does a lot of hand-produced uh, hand goods, so she's quite good. I'm going to use some of this uh, Gunze Extra Thin Cement to uh, seal up some of the parts. Now, you can see I'm getting close here that uh, the HG kits, the quality is still very good. They squeeze together very nicely, but uh, there'll still be a couple of uh, little uh, schemas. That's not English, is it? There's a couple of little places where there's a gap in between the parts. And this super thin glue is really easy. You just drop it in over the top. It runs into those little gaps there for you. And then uh, you press it, squeeze it together. Most of the time, like 90% of the time, that will work. You just squeeze it together. The other 10% of the time, you get to have fun with something like this, the mega clamps, the jaws of orange death. And uh, I love putting these on. I feel like I'm doing something for real, you know, and squeeze it down with these things. And uh, these big parts were fun because I could put multiple clamps. Oh, bit of a miss. Easy there, Link. <laughs> that was fun. There's a couple more places that will need a little bit of attention. Say the back of the arms and the shoulder joint here. Uh, it's not super obvious. If you weren't too bothered by it, you could leave it. But just very quickly, I'll, uh, I'll run some, uh, some glue over the back of these and then press them together. The, uh, some of these were a little bit big. I'll probably have to do a, uh, a putty job over the top. Give the glue a few seconds to melt the plastic a little bit, then squeeze. And usually, you know, my hand grip strength, especially if I get both hands in like this, and, you know, manhandle these poor little gumpla, squeeze it in there, and a bit of plastic will pop out. And oftentimes, too, that will do without putty. I mean, you can just squeeze it out and then uh, file it off. Maybe not even need to use putty. Now, once I've got all of those pieces pressed together and glued reasonably well, I'll uh, go with the knife and uh, cut off any of the extra nubs that are left over. Uh, if you're a young one, if you're kids, and uh, you need some help with this stage, make sure you get mum and dad to help you because this is probably the most dangerous tool uh, that we'll be using. Come to think of it, even if you're not kids, some of you blokes that I've met in real life, I mean, you probably need to get somebody to, to give, have a, <laughs> give you a hand and watch over you when you work on this too, okay? <laughs> Jokes! In preparing for this, I was really well intentioned to, to, even when I was doing it myself and then I was going to do my voiceover, I wanted to, to show that I try to, to work away from my body. Uh, you know, I work away from my hands. Uh, I'd make sure the knife is moving away to make it as safe as possible. 
but in watching the, the footage and when I was working on it myself, I know I just don't do that. I, I, I always feel that I don't get as much control. You can see it in a couple of places, I am moving the knife away from me. Uh, and other places I'm, I'm moving it towards me, but I'm very careful. And you know, knock on wood, uh, I'm pretty careful with the knife and I'm usually usually pretty lucky with it too. But just do please be careful with this, most dangerous step. This is probably a good time to point out that I am preparing the, the, the model for paint. So I'm not going to go through the eliminate or make the, the nub marks invisible step uh, and use the plain plastic yeah. because I, I'm pretty much always going to paint my models. I just love how they look. Here's a good close-up of working back down against the seam line, and it came off well. Even some of these places that won't be visible on our finished model, I'll trim these back. Oh, there's quite a bit of plastic there. Bandai placed them super well, but if you don't clean them off, sometimes you'll have some trouble uh, mating the sides of your model together, and it can leave a bit of a gap, and once you get to the end, then you'll go, ah! Here was a really good example of the melted sprue squeezing out. Uh, I'm just trimming it back, and that makes a really clean line. Now we shall release the sandpapers! <laughs> In my mind that was going to be really funny because I'm going to kick off with uh, 400. You can see I trim them so that I've got these little squares and I try to make sure that I can see the, uh, the numbers on the back because you know I'm stupid and I forget stuff. Yeah, this white plastic is pretty hard to pick up in the video, but you can see I pointed at there was a little bit of the sprue, the plastic, the styrene, excuse me, the styrene had extruded through once I melted it with the uh, the Gunzer super thin uh, cement there. And I'll go back, the paddle pop, the uh, popsicle stick inside the sandpaper just gives you enough of a straight edge that you can move it across. And uh, I'll just go backwards and forwards until it's smooth. And then I think we're good. One thing if I can recommend though is to take it easy because it's really hard to put the plastic back on. You can always take a little bit more off. So, you know, I, I file it, check it, file it, check it, slowly go down. Um, you don't want to be trying to putty things back on. It's, it's, you can do it, but oh, it's awful. Now, the reason I don't glue my sandpaper to the, uh, to the, the popsicle stick is that I often then like to pull the, the, the sandpaper off and use my finger. I know it's not scientific, but I got a good sense of feeling and I go very softly and gently and I can get a pretty good finish like this. Remember I showed you I had the little cup of water on my desk when I'm working on this stuff? Now I'll either just dip this in uh, as is or even just dip my fingers in to give the, the sandpaper a little bit, of, little bit of water on it, to wet it a little bit. And uh, what that does is wet sanding does help you to get a slightly smoother finish for one. And the second thing is that it collects the dust. The dust doesn't go flying off everywhere. So it's for two reasons. It's just a really handy thing to do. Um, you make a little bit less of a mess and it gives you a pretty nice finish. Here's something that I'd like to do on a lot of my machining cricket kits is that I'll, uh, you know, not only do I do the simulated weathering and damage through paint, but I'll actually physically damage the kits and the plastic to, uh, to give it a super realistic look. So I've picked out here, this is the leading edge uh, if you were to use this, uh, this, this close combat sword thing. And um, I'm using this file, it's a uh, slight rectangular cross-section file. And I'm uh, pulling it in here to create some overly big you know, divots, big chunks out of the, uh, out of the sword there. And uh, I remember reading about uh, samurai when I was in Japan and how uh, the criminals would uh, try to foul the blades of the samurai by swallowing big rocks. So I had that image in my head that you can imagine this guy when he's hacking into things that uh, you could get some, some big divots and chunks out of the blade. And uh, I thought that might look pretty nifty. So some big divots going in, but also running the file up against the edge of the, uh, the sword to make sure it's not even. I wanted this to be quite imperfect. And that's just a test of this one. I've done it in different places on machining Krieger suits. This one's the first one to try it on a close combat weapon. And we'll see how it turns out. Uh, again, this is something that I, uh, I started doing on my machine Krieger kits is that uh, once I'd roughed up the plastic, I would use thin cement. Uh, all brands are okay. I've done it with Tamiya and Gunze and uh, I'd run it along the plastic to, tr to try to heal it, seal it up a little bit. The plastic can be a little bit rough and slightly out of scale if we just leave it. And if I run some thin cement down the edge there, uh, it helps to just, you know, melt it back, seal it, and uh, helps to give it a slightly more, uh, you know, uniformed finish that I think looks better on a finished model. 
Now, last thing to do is you'll see that the uh, there's a little bit of shine, leaves like a glossy residue on there. So with my worn out 400 sandpaper, uh, I'm slightly wet. I just give it a slight buff along the edges there. So I know it's kind of going, it's going two steps forward and, and one back, right? So I, uh, I hack up the plastic, seal it a bit with the uh, with the glue, and then slightly polish it back with the uh, with the sandpaper to make sure it gives it, you know, that's a, that's an appropriate level of finish, and the paint will stick to it just fine now. Now here's something that I'd like to share with other people who are new to Gumpla. See the safety nubs? See those little extra bits of plastic there to stop the uh, the helmet parts from being too sharp? Now I didn't know about them when I started Gumpla. And when I posted pictures, I'd have people, you know, safety nubs! Uh, yes, yes, safety nubs. I understand the words, but what do you mean? It's these things. And apparently that identifies you as a newbie Gumpla person. So I'll show you a quick way how to take them off. It's really easy. I highly recommend using a cutting mat. Uh, it means you can cut into it and it catches the blade on the other side. It just gives you a little bit of safety. And uh, I'll try to get the view in there. Sorry about this. I'll try to get the close up in. But I first things first, I slice off the, the bulk of the plastic with the knife. It's actually pretty straightforward. You don't need them super sharp, but having some sharpness is important for them to look proper and cool. And I learned this directly from the Gumpla Meijin master himself, Mr. Kawaguchi, when he visited us um, uh, down at the uh, Gumpla Builders World Cup in Sydney. And he gave a demo, especially uh, particularly uh, on this uh, part of the process. It was uh, cleaning up uh, the safety nubs. And uh, I got to, uh, to hold in my, in my sweaty little hands the, uh, the, the helmet that he, uh, he modified as well. It was very cool. And uh, you could tell it makes, it makes a big difference. It really sharpens it up and it takes away some of the scale effect. The nub marks do tend to, to make the, the helmet more toy-like, and that's fair enough. I mean, these are also uh, designed so that little kids can make them. So uh, if we want to, uh, to make our big boy version of them, we've got to do a little bit of work. Now, using my uh, 400 sandpaper, back and forth along the outside edge here, I gradually whittle the plastic back until I've got a reasonably sharp point here. I don't want it too sharp. Uh, it's pretty small, I don't want to break it off. But with a little bit of work, you can have it looking like this. It greatly improves the look of your Gumpla. Thanks very much for watching through with me, guys. If you really like my videos, my patron supporters get extended cut versions that I put up with them. Ah, uh, there's a link below that you can check out for details. Thanks. Now that I'm based in Australia, I get all of my Japan hobby products and goods from Hobbyco down in Sydney. And a very special thanks to our Paint on Plastic co-production team and my awesome patrons for making these videos possible. Thank you for the support, guys. And lastly, we also run a really cool group on Facebook called the Paint on Plastic Facebook group. Please come and check us out there. There'll be a link in the, uh, in the comments below. Cheers, guys. Have a great one. Bye.